Welcome to the next episode in Myeloma Made Simple entitled Treatment for Patients Not Going to Transplant Made Simple. Multiple myeloma is the disease where the average age is approximately 70, so it is natural for us to think about patients who may not be eligible for an autologous stem cell transplant. Rightly or wrongly, we still generally divide people once the diagnosis of myeloma is made into two groups based on whether or not they will be eligible or not eligible for an autologous stem cell transplant. Making that decision is not easy and requires a careful geriatric evaluation and a discussion with the patient as to their preferences. Eligibility should not be based on age alone. Several tools exist to help assess eligibility for transplant and they should be used carefully. We make this distinction based on the reality that transplant prolongs people's remission, and so we want to use it when patients are indeed eligible. Transplant is covered more fully in our Transplant Made Simple video, uh, but in brief, transplant is giving patients a high dose of the drug Melphalan. Melphalan is an alkylator drug that we have been using for over 60 years in multiple myeloma because it is quite effective. It can be given either in high dose with a stem cell transplant or as a low dose oral drug. Historically, patients not going to transplant were given low dose melphalan through various combinations. However, we've come to appreciate now that we really do not have to use melphalan upfront in patients not going to transplant because we have better options that provide even more benefit with less side effects. Melphalan itself can cause a lot of challenges in reducing blood counts, increasing the risk of infection, and potentially even putting patients at risk of leukemia. This has resulted in a rather major shift of treatment away from melphalan-based regimens to novel treatments for patients who are not going to transplant. In fact, the regimens used are now very similar to those who are going to transplant. These include novel combinations using proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, and monoclonal antibodies. The most common regimens used include VRD, Velcade Revlimid Dexamethasone, and sometimes we add daratumumab to it, known as DVRD. Over the last several years, we've come to appreciate that we can give triplet combinations to patients not going to transplant. The two most used combinations are VRD and DRD, or daratumumab, Revlimid, and dexamethasone. This is based on large phase three trials that have proven that these triplets are better than the doublets. The SWOG777 study compared VRD to RD and demonstrated that VRD was not only better by giving an improved response rate and progression-free survival, but ultimately an overall survival advantage of the three drugs together. The challenge with this regimen, however, is that it is difficult to give bortezomib for long periods of time because of the neuropathy. In another recent study known as the Maya trial, DRD was compared to RD. The results were quite impressive and have become the standard of care because it also demonstrated improvement in response, progression-free survival, and overall survival in patients not going to transplant. It was quite remarkable in that results at five years demonstrated that over half of patients were still in remission and over two thirds of patients were still alive when given that triplet combination of daratumumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. One of the reasons why patients did so well with this combination is that they were able to remain on continuous therapy with both daratumumab and lenalidomide. In clinical practice, we have also come to appreciate that with all of these regimens, it's important to dose myeloma drugs appropriately so that they can be given safely and be well tolerated in typically older patients not going to transplant. This means that dosing drugs like lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone must be done carefully, keeping a patient's age, comorbidities, and preference in mind. This is particularly important with dexamethasone, as we know this drug, although very effective at boosting the effect of the drugs it's partnered with, can cause several side effects. These include mood changes, decreased energy, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, bruising, and many others. 
We're now using lower doses of steroids and for shorter periods of time to maximize its effect and reduce its negative effects. In summary, we have come a long way with initial treatment of patients who are not planning to go to stem cell transplant. Several options exist, including the most commonly used regimens of VRD, Velcade Revlimid and Dexamethasone, and DRD, De Daratumumab Revlimid and Dexamethasone, as we tend to no longer use melphalan upfront in these patients. Continuous therapy is now possible and has led to improved survival outcomes. Thank you.